his first shot. Remember? Interesting facts about famous people. Male supporting actors in John Wayne Westerns. John Wayne is likely the best known Western actor of all time. We all have our favorite movie of his making. He didn't do this all on his own. One of the reasons we love his film so much was the rapport he had with those who appeared around and next to him. Wayne was a generous actor and gave his supporting actors and co-stars their time in front of the camera. Today we will take a look at some of the best of his supporting actors. If you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel as well. I appreciate it. Let's get into it. Henry Fonda, Fort Apache, 1948. One film in which Wayne and Fonda starred together was Fort Apache, that they actually co-starred with each other on screen. Another was a small scene in harm's way, notwithstanding. Fonda is superb in John Ford's Fort Apache as the stiff-backed Martinet, Lieutenant Colonel Owen Thursday. Wayne, as Captain York, finds himself the object of Thursday's disdain due to his sympathetic treatment of the Apache leader Cochise, and the sparks really do fly between the two of them whenever they butt heads together. Thursday sacrifices himself and his command in a doomed encounter with the Apaches, leaving Kirby, who has been consigned to non-battle duties, to pick up the pieces. In the spirit of the Ford classic, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, Kirby decides that when the legend becomes fact, you should print the legend, in the process protecting Kirby's legacy. This was a significant film for both actors, as Fort Apache is the vehicle in which Fonda hands over the reins to Wayne as John Ford's leading man. Collingwood and the rest. They'll keep on living as long as a regiment lives. Their pay is $13 a month, and their diet beans and hay. Montgomery Clift, Red River, 1948. As far as co-stars go, I find it hard to think of a more opposite actor to star with John Wayne than Montgomery Clift. Their differing approach to acting was so wide you could drive a herd of cattle between it. Strangely enough, they work well together as father and adopted son in this Howard Hawks film, Red River. Clift hardly does or says anything that might crowd Wayne off the screen, but still delivers a performance equal to that of Wayne. The anticlimactic ending to the film, when the violent encounter between Wayne and Clift is stopped by Joe Andrews' character, Clift, as much as Wayne, holds the attention. Stop telling people what to do. Right now. At least as soon as... When? As soon as I tell you one thing more. What? Robert Mitchum, El Dorado, 1966. Aside from Mitchum and Wayne both appearing in The Longest Day, it wasn't until El Dorado that they played opposite each other on screen. Arguably a remake of Rio Bravo, directed by Howard Hawks. Mitchum resurrects Dean Martin's role from the previous film as Sheriff J.P. Hurrah. Just like Dude, Hurrah also turned to the bottle after an unhappy liaison with a woman. Like Dean Martin, Mitchum is one of only a few actors to match Wayne on screen, the both of them delivering similar chemistry that John Wayne and Martin played in Rio Bravo. Both of them delivering similar chemistry that John Wayne and Martin played in Rio Bravo. Nobody came in here. That's right, nobody came in. Well, that's it. Now she ought to go out the front door. With McLeod and his... Well... All right, let her come through this way. I'll close my eyes. <laughs> come on. Uh, Ma'am, you might just as well leave that basket. Sure, Mrs. <laughs> come on, Marty.
Kirk Douglas, The War Wagon, 1967, before appearing together in Cast a Giant Shadow and The War Wagon. Wayne and Douglas met at a screening of Lust for Life, in which Kirk played the unfortunate French painter Vincent van Gogh. Duke took Douglas to task for playing a weak character, as we now live in more politically correct times. I won't repeat the exact words Wayne used when describing Van Gogh. Douglas stood his ground, telling Wayne that he was an actor. Films are make-believe. They're not real, and besides, you're not really John Wayne either. It's good to see Douglas using more of a Duke approach to his role of gunfighter Lomax. They both seem to enjoy sparring with each other on screen, a more enjoyable viewing experience than their previous partnership in Cast a Giant Shadow. Oh, Max, I want you to swing over to Chavisco. Chavisco? Pick up a kid named Billy Hyatt and bring him out to the old mission. Sure hate being away from you. Well, I'm afraid that's how it's gonna have to be. Don't let anything happen to you. Not likely. Dean Martin, Rio Bravo, 1959. There is arguably a case to be made that Rio Bravo is just as much Dean Martin's film as it is Wayne's. After splitting with long-term partner Jerry Lewis, Martin proved his acting chops, first of all in The Young Lions opposite Marlon Brando and Montgomery Clift, then a year later in Rio Bravo as the drunkard sheriff dude. Martin, the first character to appear in the film, skulking into a saloon, looking for a free drink, then smacking Wayne as John T. Chance over the head. When Chance denies him the indignity of retrieving money thrown into Joe, a spittoon by a arrest. villainous Joe Burdett, so. Claude Aikens. Around, One of Martin's best scenes now is when he redeems sure. himself by pouring a glass of whiskey back into a bottle without spilling a drop. Six years later, Martin is once again Wayne's co-star in The Sons of Katie Elder, playing one of Duke's brothers. Although Martin acquits himself well, I prefer his performance as Dude in Rio Bravo. James Stewart, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, 1962. John Wayne is ostensibly the main star of The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. James Stewart as Easton Lawman, Rand Stoddard, certainly gives the Duke a run for his money. The first time they appeared together, they were both way too old to be courting Vera Miles, who was more than 20 years younger than them. Stewart turned out to be one of the most effective of Duke's co-stars. A shame they had not worked together more. Reminded by Stewart's memorable cameo in The Shootist as the doctor who tells Wayne he'd have to gut him like a fish in order to remove the tumour that's killing him. Richard Widmark the Alamo, 1960. The Alamo had three things going for it. First was the magnificent soundtrack by Dmitry Tiomkin. Second was the battle and other action sequences, credited to assistant director Cliff Lyons. Last, and most definitely not least, was Richard Whitmark's superb performance as Jim Bowie. I heard somewhere that the first time Wayne met Whitmark, some years before they made the Alamo together, Wayne referred to him as that giggling son of a bitch referencing Widmark's role as psycho Tommy Udo in Henry Hathaway's noir thriller Kiss of Death. Wayne's lack of tact was also to the fore when he welcomed his co-star on the set of the Alamo with a banner proclaiming, Welcome Dick, to which Widmark replied, My name is Richard. Despite these social setbacks among the two of them, Widmark emerged from the film with much of the acting kudos, relegating Duke as Davy, John Wayne, Crockett, and Lawrence Harvey's posturing as William Travis into second and third place in the acting stakes. Well, what do you think, Jim? <laughs> I hate to say anything good about that long-winded jackanapes, but he does know the short way to start. Jeffrey Hunter. The Searchers, 1956. Ethan's hatred of Indians flares the moment he meets Martin Pauley, Jeffrey Hunter. Hell, I could mistake you for a half-breed. Martin says he's one-eighth Comanche. Ethan rescued young Martin when his family was killed by Indians and left him with Martha and Aaron to be raised. But it's clear, he thinks, one-eighth is too much. 
When Martin insists on joining Ethan's search for the captured Debbie, Ethan says, I give the orders, and treats the younger man with contempt. In a saloon, Ethan pours out drinks, but snatches away Martin's glass. Snarling, wait till you grow up. Martin, at this point, has been a ranch hand. He's engaged to be married, has been on the trail with Ethan for years. Does Ethan privately think it's dangerous for a half-breed to drink? One of the mysteries of The Searchers involves the relationship between Ethan and Martin on the trail. Living alone with each other for months at a time. Sleeping under the stars. What did they talk about? How could they share a mission and not find common cause as men? Martin's function on the trail is to argue for Debbie's life, since Ethan intends to find her and kill her. Ethan doesn't like Indians, and says so plainly. When he reveals his intentions to kill Debbie, Martin says, she's alive and she's going to stay alive. And Ethan growls, living with Comanches ain't being alive. He slaughters Buffalo in a shooting frenzy, saying, at least they won't feed any Comanches this winter. Oliver Hardy, The Fighting Kentuckian, 1949. The Duke and Hardy. Vera Ralston is Fleurette de Marchand, a member of a group of French exiles. They supported Napoleon, for saps, living in Alabama. The Duke plays John Breen, a Kentucky rifleman who falls in love with her. John Howard plays the evil Blake Randolph, a man of power and standing who contrives a dastardly plan to steal both Ralston and her family's land. Oliver Hardy plays it for laughs. He makes a great comic sidekick, and I wish he'd played that role a little more often. The surveying scene is priceless. This one is a cut above the usual Western Ota, with easy humour, romance, and some enjoyable characterizations and dialogue. William Holden, The Horse Soldiers, 1959. John Wayne's been given a critical job to do by none other than General Ulysses S. Grant. He's been ordered to take three brigades deep into Confederate territory and destroy a critical rail supply station and then get his troops out the best way he can. He takes along an army surgeon, played by William Holden. Wayne has an unreasoning dislike of Holden and their rivalry, professional and personal, drives the plot of The Horse Soldiers. One of Wayne's best performances. Wayne's a volunteer officer in civilian life. He rose from section hand on a railroad to a construction engineer. Holden calls him section hand as a term of derision after Wayne consistently refers to him as Crocker. Wayne and Holden were very close personal friends and friendly rivals at the box office. That's part of the reason why the horse soldiers is so good. The chemistry between them. In fact, when Wayne died in 1979, Holden was said to have gone on one of his legendary drinking binges. Who would have suspected we'd have lost him as well two years later? Strip your blouse. What are the rules going to be, Colonel? Just make up your own. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check out my Facebook page. The links are in the description. I am Wrangler. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.